Hello and welcome to this Air Hauler 2 tutorial series. Today I'm going to show you how to create and manage factories. Uh, but before I do that, just a reminder that I'm using X-Plane 11 for this uh, tutorial series. Uh, but these tutorials are totally applicable to both the FSX and P3D version of Air Hauler 2. They're all pretty much identical, so they should be relevant if you have those versions. So, factories. What are they all about? What do they do? How do you set them up and how do you make some money? So what you need to do is we're in our office right here. Go up to the top, click on factories and construction. And then you go to factories right here, and this is the uh, screen which will show current factories that you have built uh, and what they're producing currently. But just a quick little tutorial if you haven't checked out my earlier ones on what these are all about. Now factories produce tier 2 and tier 3 commodities. So if we go up to our items list up here, here goes a list of all the different commodities in the game. So all the tier 1 items right here. These items here are freely available at heaps of airports around the world. Now some airports will have more different types of uh, commodities than others, but they're, f they're freely available pretty much uh, all over the place. Now the difference with tier 2 items and tier 3 items is the only way that you can get a hold of those is to manufacture them in, an, uh, in a factory. And you've, the way to get a factory is that you've got to construct a factory at a base that you actually own and operate. So if I wanted some air hauler CDs, for example, I would need to go ahead, create a factory, and then I would need to uh, have on hand some plastics. That's sort of the recipe, if you like, to be able to uh, create air hauler CDs. If I wanted to do cosmetics, I would need one chemical and one perfume. And of course... Uh, most of these uh, components that are required to produce the Tier 2 and Tier 3 uh, commodities are usually Tier 1, but sometimes you do have to combine, say, a Tier 1 and a Tier 2 commodity to make, say, a Tier 3 or even a Tier 2. Hopefully that's not too confusing, but basically to cut a long story short, uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 commodities, you have to manufacture them with your factory. And so I'm going to show you how to set up a factory. Now, just to give you a bit of setting around how you can actually make, make some money with these, uh, unlike tier one commodities, which you can just buy and sell all around the place, so you can buy them low at one airport and sell them for a higher price and make a profit at a different airport, the only, way, the only sort of function or the only purpose of tier two and tier three items at the moment are missions. And if we go onto the home page here and we look at available missions, it will list uh, all the different missions that are available to you at the moment. And of course, as you visit different airports, you'll meet these different characters or clients. And from time to time, they will produce missions for you to complete. Uh, for example, in this case here, uh, Reese Stevens wants some lab equipment and he'll pay 515 per pound. Uh, the only way you can get lab equipment is to have a factory and produce it. Uh, they're also... Uh, tier 2 and Tier 3 um, commodities are also used for humanitarian missions, which are non-profit but do increase your reputation. So there's a pretty limited use for commodities at the moment, and it's not as though you know that, for example, an airport 100 miles away has got an ongoing need for, say, a Tier 2 commodity and you just can keep producing them and make profit. It's sort of a bit random when you will actually uh, need to produce them. And so with that in mind, the jury's out a little bit on whether these are really that great uh, for producing a heck of a lot of income. Now, the developer has said that he's going to look to implement a system where you are able to sell Tier 2 and Tier 3 commodities around the world, but it will be uh, limited to a, a very small number of uh, airports. But up until then, uh, like I say, it's really driven from the mission, uh, the missions that are available. So therefore, there's not a huge amount of money to be made, particularly when you take into account the startup costs when uh, creating a factory. So hopefully that makes sense there. Let's go ahead and uh, and build a factory and uh, and then we can show you what the process looks like. So once again, back up to factories and construction uh, and uh, you go to factories right here, I already got the little tab open. And what I would do is I go to open new uh, and this is all pretty straightforward. Follow your nose, select the base that you want to build your factory, call it something like uh, Wellington factory or whatever you want to call it. Now what you can do is you can actually produce three different items at a factory. You can either produce one, two or three. You don't have to produce all three. It's up to three. Uh, so really you've got to decide what kind of um, 
what kind of uh, of tier two and tier three commodities do I want to produce? Now, as before, you remember the mission that I showed you before? Let me just, I should have really uh, focused on that. Available missions right here. Uh, let's look at this one here, cosmetics. So Chloe Gray, uh, it's located at our local airport. So if we can produce them at our airport, we can just transfer them across and make a profit. We don't have to fly, like for example, to supply the lab equipment, we'd have to produce it in our factory in Wellington and then fly it up to NZAR, which is Ardmore. But the good news about this supply mission, which is cosmetics, which she's willing to pay £642. And by the way, there's not an unlimited amount of uh, demand. There's just 1,054 that she would like, but it's still nice there, 642 times 1,000, $642,000 worth of income sitting there if we can do it. Uh, but as you can see, um, all we would need to do is produce it in Wellington and just transfer it across and uh, our mission is completed and we get the money. So let's take cosmetics as an example. Let's build our factory around cosmetics um, and see how we go. So if we go back into factories and uh, actually, sorry, I'm skipping around a little bit here, but let's just talk through the thought process here. When you look at building a factory, for a start, you're going to build it around an existing mission. So you're going to have to do the numbers to figure out, is this actually profitable to do this? So we know that it's 642 per pound. So the first thing you want to figure out is, okay, how much is it going to cost me to manufacture this thing? So what I'd recommend is going up to items. And uh, no, sorry. Uh, yes, you would go into items for a start. And you want to just make sure you look at the recipe. And as we saw before, you need one chemical and one perfume. So you know you're going to need uh, one each of these, which will then transfer into one cosmetic. So let's look at the local stock that's available at Wellington, because it would be great if they had both chemicals and perfumes locally. Then I wouldn't have to fly anywhere and pick up, uh, pick up the, uh, the commodity and have to fly it back. So if I go to overview map here, and oh, look at this, by the way. Here goes one of my uh, passenger routes that's been flown by my Joseph James uh, uh, pilot. And check out one of my previous videos on how you set up passenger routes. Uh, but let's look at the commodities that are currently available in Wellington. It'll be so good if they got both of them. So we've got chemicals as one. Uh, so have we, we haven't got chemicals, bummer. Okay, but we do have perfumes. Okay, so we know that we can source perfumes locally. We can actually source up to 3,000. And given that she only needs 1,000 and you only need one per recipe, we've got more than enough local stock to fulfill her order. So what I'd note down here is that perfumes are $194. So we're just thinking here, how much, you know, how much am I going to make, uh, or how much is it going to cost to develop this tier two or tier three commodity? So then I'm going to have to then uh, figure out, okay, where can I get some chemicals from to be able to complete the recipe? The best way to do it is just go up to factories and go to stock finder, uh, drop down the box and find the commodity you're looking for chemicals there we go and show distance from just click on the find button here put nzwn because we want to fight show the distance from our current airport and that will take a couple of seconds to think about it uh, and then you can sort the distance and ignore the zeros so the closest airport that has chemicals is 71 nautical miles away and they have 210 not quite enough so Oharkia is probably a better option. It's very close. I know exactly where these <laughs> airports are, pretty much on top of each other. And they've got 3,700. So let's check out the price of, uh, of chemicals in Oharkia. So here we go right here. We click on them. Actually, we need to go to uh, overview map right here. Uh, here we go, NZOH. And if we go to what we're looking for, chemicals, they're $10. Okay, so what we know is that chemicals are $10. We know that perfumes are $194. So therefore, the, the, the cost of the materials to build cosmetics is $204. So we note that down. Now remember that the client is willing to pay us $642. Um, and so if we can supply them with a thousand, our total profit is 642,000. Uh, we know that it's 204,000, which is 204 
times a thousand. That's how much it's going to cost us just to produce, just to get the materials. Now it's going to cost us slightly more than that because we're going to actually have to fly up to Ohakia, pick up the materials, and bring them back. Now uh, we could earn some money by taking some, uh, some maybe some commodities and sell them up at Ohaki to make a bit of money and make it worthwhile. We could send an AI pilot to do the job. You know, there's a few things we can do, but it is going to cost us some money. Maybe might only cost a few hundred bucks to go and pick them up, so probably not a heck of a lot. But we know the base cost is two hundred and four dollars. So let's we're ready now to go and create our factory. So if we went to open new. Uh, and we went to base ICAO, which is uh, where we are located. Let's just call it the uh, Wellington Factory. And the item we are going to craft is, uh, what was it? Cosmetics. Okay, great. And that's, this will bring up the next bit of information that um, that you need to know, and that's a co tooling cost. That's another cost that you're going to have to incur when um, when setting up this particular manufacturing plant. So 130,000. So I add that to my list here as I write it down on my paper. So we know that the total cost to produce a thousand is 204,000 for the materials, plus 130,000 for uh, to set up the factory. So 334,000, so 642 minus 334, that means $308,000 profit to, to actually uh, fulfill this uh, mission. So actually, it's absolutely worth doing in my opinion. So I'm starting to come, come around for, to these factories. So for the ease of use, um, or for this video, right, I would have to go and fly that and pick them all up and then create them. So... Uh, that's going to take a little while to do that, so I'm not I'm not going to do that for this mission. But we have this, we have obviously uh, worked out that uh, doing this particular mission is well worthwhile. There's no other missions at the moment that um, the other ones are quite complex. Just looking at what's required. So let's just say that the person wanted designer clothing because I know that all you need for designer clothing is one textile, and I know that I've got textiles locally, so I can show you how the how the um, uh, factory actually works. So we'll leave cosmetics in there, and uh, just for the hell of it, and we'll set up uh, designer clothing, uh, and that costs 220,000 by the way. Now I haven't got any customers, so this is really just a test, and I'll go okay to open. My new factory has opened, and there we go. Our, our um, our factory is ready to go. I'll spit it out eventually. So what I'm going to do, just to, so we can sh see how a factory actually operates, I'm going to uh, create some designer clothing because we know that we can do the chemicals, uh, sorry, the cosmetics, but I don't want to go and have to fly and grab that other stuff, but I'm going to do it later because it's well worthwhile. But what we need to do is, here goes a factory here. You go down to stock and manufacturing, and this uh, is the main screen that you're going to use to actually manufacture things. So all you're really doing is uh, you need to grab, uh, I need to go and buy some textiles uh, and put them in here and then move them across to my factory. Then when they're at the factory, I then can press manufacture, drop down the list, select which one I want to uh, create and then how many I want to create and away we go. So let's do that. Let's go and buy some textiles. So I'll just work you through the process right here. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go to overview map. Uh, let's go to Wellington, let's go to uh, textiles, um, and down the bottom right, left hand corner here, buy. Uh, let's just buy, uh, what quantity? Let's just buy, say, 100. How about that? So buy, boom, commodities are purchased. And so if we go to our base screen, by the way, bases, uh, as you can see here, we've got a commodity storage capacity of 5,000, so more than enough to carry my 500 so if you wanted to stock up on commodities as I mentioned in an earlier video go ahead and add capacity and you'd be good to go uh, you got to make sure you've got enough storage space so let's set up our uh, factory right here boom so we want to create some designer clothing so we go edge and ship stock so what this is saying is grab the grab the commodities we need in order to manufacture whatever we're trying to manufacture and ship them across and move them ship them or truck them I should say across to the factory so you just go, how many do you want to do? The whole lot. So I just go move to. So I'm moving them from my airport base to the factory. Press OK. Boom. And here they are right down here. Our factory stock is textiles 100. So then you just need to tell the program to go ahead and manufacture them. So you select the item that you want 
to manufacture, designer clothing. How many do you want them to do? 100. And then it tells you what it needs. Uh, well, I am completely wrong because it's actually three textiles by the looks of it per uh, to get one designer clothing. So I mucked it up, but that's fine. We've still got enough. Let's just put in 33 and there's going to be 99 textiles. So make sure you check the recipe first. I thought it was one textile per designer clothing, but it's three textiles per de uh, designer clothing. So there we go. These 99 textiles are going to make 33 designer clothing. So I go to add to queue. Yes, do you want to build uh, 33 pounds of designer clothing? Yes, I do. Boom. And so that's just going to see how the status is pending. That's just going to tick along in the background. Some, some can go quite quickly. Sometimes it takes quite a while. But what I'll do is once it's manufactured uh, some of these, I'll come back and just show you how you can go ahead and uh, move them out of your factory. So I'll catch you soon. Okay, welcome back everybody and about five or six minutes later and we've created uh, 10 designer clothing so far. So all you need to do is you need to just ship it back to your to your base. So you just go add ship stock. Here goes the designer clothing sitting here at the factory. I'll just move from there. Now you can move part of it back or some of it back, uh, but I'm moving the whole 10 designer clothing back. I go okay. And boom, it's removed from the bottom left-hand corner there. If I now go into uh, my base, which is NZWN, and I look at base commodity stock, there we go. We've got our 10 designer clothing sitting right there. So when I go ahead and um, sort out doing those cosmetics that we were doing before, uh, obviously uh, I can then go ahead and sell them if I wanted to, but uh, in this clay case here, obviously, uh, there's nobody uh, needing designer clothing, but I'd go up into the missions and uh, sort out the uh, cosmetics there. Uh, but in this case here, obviously, well, this was just a test to show you how you can create them. So it's really straightforward. Uh, there was a bit of a long explan explanation there, so I apologize for that. But just to cut a long story short, the first thing you want to do is have a look at your missions. What kind of tier two and tier three uh, commodities do people want sometimes they want tier one commodities by the way so that's nice and easy but we're talking about using factories so find out what people want through the missions tab up the top uh, do some calculations to figure out okay if I fulfill the entire order how much income am I going to get then work out how much is it going to cost for the base materials so for the the core materials to create this item uh, and then work out how much the tooling cost is going to be when you're building your factory uh, so then you can take off the uh, factory cost, the um, this the uh, material cost, and then see whether it's worthwhile doing. So it's a little bit um, you know hit and miss because you're relying on missions to pop up and for them to be profit profitable, but that's and that's not always the case. But like I said, in the future they're looking to add a function where you can sell them at other airports, you know, tier one and tier two commodities that is. So hopefully this made sense there was a bit of information if you did if you do have any further questions please let me know down below in the comments um, otherwise if you did enjoy the video please hit that uh, like button down below subscribe if you're new and until next time everybody take it easy